Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. I am doing it in a slightly different location to how I would normally do the long form readings but I was getting prepared to do a short so just a one minute reading and the beautiful Kali came through and the star mother and I decided to turn this into a beautiful long form reading like I normally do because it was just too hard to get all of the information that was channeling through into this one minute little kind of story. So we are going to go into a deeper reading with the beautiful Kali and this star mother energy. So as we feel into this Kali energy, she is known as the dark mother. So when the star mother came out as the, the sort of secondary message, I was like, this message is so much deeper. So the beautiful Kali is our liberator. She is the revolutionary. She is the rebel. And it really is about what do you need to release? How can you destroy all the things in your life that aren't serving you? But also understanding that the beautiful Kali is the dark mother. She is the one that holds us through the unfold. Holding. She's the one that holds us through the debriding that we go through. So how can we nurture ourselves? this beautiful star mother coming through to say, how can we mother ourselves? So how can you nurture yourself as you go through these huge transformative portals that you may find yourself in? And you may be dipping in and out of these transformational kind of portals, but it really is just this energy of how can you nurture yourself during the debriding, during the dark night of the soul phase, during any of these spaces of liberation and transformation, transmutation. So she's such a powerful energy. She's one of the goddesses I work with the most. And I do have a few different Kali practices and meditations on the YouTube channel if you want to go have a look, because it is a way that you can start to really empower yourself to work with beautiful Kali. So let's get some more messages about what Kali is here to show us today, what we need to be see what we're needing to be seeing about this liberation, this this rebellious kind of revolutionary energy that wants to come through because it does feel like a very fiery intense energy today. So what else do we need to see with this beautiful message? So we have the 2 of pentacles. This is about balance coming through. Let's see what else. And we have the King of Swords. Interestingly enough, the King of Swords actually came through in an earlier reading I was doing, and then I decided not to actually post it because just the energy felt a little bit intense and a bit strange. And it makes a lot of sense because Kali then came through afterwards. So there is a lot of this energy that is about cutting things out of your life that no longer serve, about severing the ties to the mind. And that's really what I'm feeling with this is what can you, how can you sever the ties to the mind? How can you allow yourself to find more balance between the mind and the body, between the mind and the soul, really allowing yourself to be nurtured in that energy. We're just going to get one more of these cards. And then we have the Page of Pentacles coming through. So this is really about new initiations in terms of the 3D realm, the 3D world. You could look at that from a place of, it feels like a very, um, I love the page energy. It's one of my, it's just an energy that I adore in, in the deck. It doesn't matter which page it is. It always feels like this this desire to start a new journey. There's so much anticipation. There's so much excitement here. And this is really about excitement in what is coming, excitement in what is coming for the 3D sort of perspective of your world, the humanness, whether you see that as the material in terms of abundance, in terms of how you're showing up. But it really does feel like this fresh new energy is coming through about how you're connecting into the 3D world. Just because you might be going through a spiritual awakening and you might be working more on the kind of 5D energies and all of that beautiful stuff that we talk about, it doesn't mean you can avoid or ignore or or brush to the side the 3D. You can't ignore the humanness. You can't ignore that space. So having some excitement in that energy as you focus on this liberation kind of space, it really does feel like this high liberating kind of energy coming through here. So it's really, really interesting. Okay, I'm going to switch up decks there because I don't want that deck. What else do we need to be seeing for this beautiful Kali energy? How is Kali wanting to support you at this time? We have the Divine Feminine. This card has been coming through in so many readings. It is such a strong frequency right now that we are really feeling into that space of the divine feminine. So really allowing yourself to connect into, again, this is the, this is the body. This is the embodied state. The feminine is the embodied state. It is the creative, the nurtured kind of energy. 
So really nurturing that divine feminine within you. And again, this is just energy. It has nothing to do with gender. It has nothing to do with anything like that. This is all just an energetic state of being. And Kali is such a strong lower chakra goddess. So she really does sit within the lower chakras and the divine feminine frequency exists in the lower chakra. So it really does see this beautiful tie-in coming through that you are being invited to really focus on the liberation of your divine feminine. And I really do see this with a lot of people Whenever I sort of speak about this and we talk with, about Shakti and we really work with the Shakti energy, it's what I work with the most. But when I see a lot of people go, sort of stepping into that, they feel into the divine feminine frequency in terms of the, the, the heart space and the nurture and the compassion and, and the vulnerability and all of that. But we miss that primordial kind of energy of the feminine. And that's what it's really calling in. Kali doesn't fuck about she doesn't sort of mince her energy she is really inviting you to understand what it means to liberate your divine feminine which is that beautiful creative sexual sensual eroticism that is the the way we connect to life so connecting into the pleasure and the passion of life and clearing anything out that no longer serves that particular high purpose what we can see a lot when we focus on this energy, and anyone who's ever worked with me in this will know that we talk about the pendulum swing, that you might be repressed, you might be feeling stagnant in the feminine frequency, in your shakti, in how you are connected into your sexuality, you might feel a little bit repressed or numb or stagnant or stuck or very, very numb or stagnant. And we start to awaken that and the pendulum swings into this chaotic wild woman kind of energy. And it's so beautiful to see that sort of unleashing of the divine feminine. And then we eventually find this equilibrium state, which is that balance card coming through again. We find this equilibrium state where we can reside in both the masculine and the feminine frequency. We can exist in our full feminine wild and we can also exist in the beautiful nurturing, compassionate, caring energy. There is no need to try to choose one side of it. We are always ebbing and flowing in amongst these energies but normally when people start truly awakening their shakti life force their full feminine frequency the pendulum can swing and it can get a little bit crazy and that's actually a beautiful thing because if you've been repressed for a long time in your feminine then this is the invitation to say it's okay to unleash it it's okay to to fully own all of that and then we have reflection so this says the energy of reflection supports our growth through the insights we get from the contemplation of self and others. So what is Kali reflecting back at you at this time? What reflection are you currently seeing in your life in terms of how you are showing up, how you're being called to show up? What resistance are you meeting with this? To me, what I'm really feeling with the Kali reflection sort of energy, it really does feel like it's almost like there's a desire to meet Kali. There's a desire to work with her energy. There's the desire to get to know that kind of frequency, but it's all coming from the analytical, the logical, the conceptual mind, and not through the embodied lived experience of Kali. Whenever I work with people around this, that attraction card has come up twice on the bottom. So I'm just going to show you that as well, because that's on the bottom twice after I've shuffled. When we feel into the the embodied state and this really is something that I work with so much it's that the con the concept behind it the concept behind working with some of these goddess energies or some of these frequencies is more important to appear that you are in that kind of energy or that you're practicing with these energies it's almost more important for you to appear that you're doing it rather than actually doing the inner work with these goddesses because this kind of work is not easy to work with these kind of darker goddess energies and these aren't evil these are just embodied so when we look at dark goddess versus light goddess frequencies so this is a dark goddess frequency this is a light goddess frequency one is an embodied state and the other so it's the, the dark it's the matted state so the physical embodied state our sexuality our creativity our our shakti all of that stuff the light is the emotional energetic state of being which is the compassion and the nurturing and the vulnerability so never see them as good or bad they're just simply embodied versus energetic states and when you're feeling into that, sometimes I really do see people have the desire on the conceptual mind to want to work with these goddesses, but actually fear going too deep into it. So if you have been fearing your feminine, if you've been fearing working with Shakti, if you've been fearing working with Kali, this is your invitation to actually go deep into that, to see where you are wanting to do it out of 
a desire to be kind of seen in the in the spiritual community as working with these energies versus actually doing the deep inner work with them because the deep inner work with these goddesses is not pretty it is not easy it is not for the faint of heart when you work with goddesses like Kali and Lilith and Medusa and the Morrigan and Morgane Le Fay and oh god the Hecate there's so many of them they are they are the liberators of self they are the the desire to be fully embodied, to be fully witnessed and felt and and nurtured within the self rather than looking at them from a, an energetic place, say like Kuan Yin, focusing on compassion in the heart. So to work with these goddesses can be quite challenging. But that's the gift. That's the invitation there. So taking that as it resonates and leave what doesn't. And let's get another message here. What else do we need to be seeing about this beautiful work with... Carly, we're just going to get another couple cards here. And Carly does come through in a lot of readings, so it's really quite interesting. The Justice card, balancing out again. We've got another balancing card. And this to me is like balancing out karma. So as you really step into this energy, there are the birds in the background too, if you can hear them. They're crazy here this morning. But really feeling into how you're balancing out your own karma, how you're balancing out, how you're harmonizing. But it really does as well feel like that justice is being served to your soul when you actually fully tap into that frequency. So it's like you're you're reshaping your own sense of justice for your life when you start to really connect into that frequency of Kali or one of the other dark goddesses you start to understand what everything was for like why it has all taken place why it was all there and it gives you such a deep sense of inner self and inner sovereignty that you never expected or never saw that just it ties everything together so allow yourself to be really met by Kali be held by Kali and really go into this kind of nurtured state and I'm just going to get one final message here what else do we need to see from the goddess Kali right now? We have the goddess of sacred power. <laughs> you could not ask for a better card. And it says, you are being encouraged to take a leading role in your current situation. You are being encouraged to take a leading role in your life. That is your sacred power. Something that I spoke about recently, I think it was in a full moon ceremony I did. And we spoke about power because that's really what the energy was about. It was the full moon in Leo and it was really about our sovereignty and our power and really connecting into that solar plexus space. But this is also what the, the dark goddess frequency really focuses on is connecting to your own sacred power and your sacred power rises from your Shakti. It rises from that feminine frequency, connecting you into your solar plexus sovereignty and really allowing you to tap into your power the reason many people avoid connecting to their sacred power is because they fear how powerful they actually are rather than embracing their inner power there's a deep fear and it's something that i see a lot is how much do you fear your sacred power and this can come from past life connections so if you have had sort of a past life where you have been extremely powerful in your life then maybe that is why there is a fear there but allowing yourself to develop and nurture your own inner sacred power really finding that balanced state as well. So when you start activating that sacred power, again, it can feel like that pendulum swing goes a little bit haywire. You can create a whole lot of inner chaos, which is why that inner masculine container is what holds us. So when we work with the Shakti, when we work with the feminine, remembering that you also need to have the inner masculine to hold you. That inner masculine container holds you in your aliveness and your chaotic kind of energy as you begin to awaken your true nature. And that's what really serves you to, it's like this, this beautiful, uh, this merging, this melding of energy of sacred inner power and complete, steady, held, nurtured sort of energy it's a really beautiful um, energy to be in so if you want to really connect into that sacred power even if you're working with Kali and you're working to activate and bring that sort of Shakti to life how can you also call in your own inner masculine to really hold you strong and steady in that particular awakening so really really beautiful messages coming through there from the beautiful goddess Kali Ma the beautiful dark mother and if you're new to her energy by all means go and have a look at the meditations I have with Kali and a few of the other dark goddesses I have on the um, YouTube playlist as well because they'll help to serve beginning this journey 
And if you want to go deeper in any of this, then by all means, join me in either Mystery School, which we work with. We're going to be working with all of these beautiful goddesses in Mystery School and really beginning to awaken your inner Shakti. Or come and join me in Temple, which is our Patreon community. I hold space for the Shakti, the sexual sort of liberation in both of those spaces. Otherwise, reach out and feel into what might be the most alive for you if you want to work on this energy a little bit deeper. Sending you so much love, beautiful souls, and I will connect again soon.